Everybody, Rev Nation here. Uh, sorry, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. But um, what I want to talk about today is uh, my reaction to the new 2024 Tacoma. So uh, a couple of my subscribers are asking me, am I going to go out and buy it? Like, am I going to just rush out or put my name on the, uh, the list to be the first one to get it and all that good stuff? It depends. Uh, I've got a few dealers that, you know, I can somewhat trust. And if I can get it early enough to where it actually benefits other people and I can, you know, not get ripped off on it, I'll probably get the TRD off-road. Um, maybe the pro, but I highly doubt that I'll be able to get an actual pro, um, well before, you know, everybody else or whatever, not too concerned about that. Um, but I do think that I will pick up a TRD off-road. I'm going to get the top engine in it and I just want to see what it's like. I think the design on the TRD pro is really good. I'll throw it up on the screen here. Uh, actually, I'll put up all the trims and write in the comments which one you think is the best. Because in my opinion, I like the styling of the TRD Pro the best, particularly in that great white color that uh, we're showing here. Now, if you can look, uh, you can see where they, they cued in the angles and they cut everything really well on the front. It's a little busy um, and it does have a bit of that kind of transformer really, really hard angles look, particularly when you get into the wheel well. I do uh, like what the headlights look like. You know, I think that they uh, built that in very sleek and it will hold up well. Obviously, you have that, you know, uh, traditional um, legacy grill with the Toyota badging on that. That looks great. And um, just a bunch of other styling cues that I think uh, went really well. They did a good job Although, you know, this wasn't like super bold, you know, they, they played it safe. Uh, when you get into the rear, you know, the what I really don't like is the seats are more cramped. And I'll put a picture of that uh, ridiculous seat that they have in the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. And I am concerned about this. And the main reason I'm concerned about it is I have kids. And I'm thinking about those people that have little kids and look at all the components that are going on in that seat and think about a head-on collision where that cab is just getting you know crunched right those kids are done for and those rear passengers are done for their legs will be absolutely wrecked you know for life and toyota will be paying out millions upon millions upon millions to families that will happen um so i think that it was a, a foolish move on toyota's part you know, why are you going to place that much risk into some seats that, that don't yield all that much? Just because of those seats, the Toyota T Tacoma TRD Pro is not going to sell more than they would have had they just put in some, you know, Recaros in there or, or just a proper off-roaders, you know, style seat. Uh, not a wise move. And that said, the back seats are more compromised than the current generation. So instead of increasing, you know, the wheelbase and the cab dimensions, they just... Kind of chose not to do that they made it wider um but that didn't really yield out much in the way of overall uh cab comfort and dimensions i'll know more obviously as i'm sitting in it but from what i've seen and all the videos i've watched um the rear cab is a bit of a letdown one other thing that's a huge letdown is they did not put rear seat vents in the uh, tacoma on any trim not even the limited trip which i thought is absurd I don't know what the actual cost is, but, you know, as a trained engineer, I know it's not that hard to route your air induction system into the rear of the vehicle. They have been doing that for decades upon decades upon decades. And why modern day automotive manufacturers choose to skip out on that and say, oh, well, it's a smaller cabin and it'll cool off just fine. No, it will not. I would challenge all of those CEOs and lead designers and everybody to sit in that back seat for a period of time in a hot climate like where I live. Let's uh, get into this limited trim. Um, this is by far uh, my least favorite of the bunch. Well, actually, it's tied with that stupid fucking pre-runner that looks like shit and hopefully gets scrapped after this first year. You know, like it, it's just dumb. They played that game before. It was a terrible truck. And I don't know why they brought it back, but they did. Um, that's it. This limited trim actually looks like a SR5 with some chrome trim pieces on it. The wheels that they chose for this thing, those look like hubcaps that I would buy at Walmart. 
and put them over my steelies. Like that's how big of a, a pile of shit that looks like, you know, it's just terrible. Uh, and that front air dam that they're putting on literally everything except for the pro and the trail hunter is so gaudy and ridiculous and it's going to get wrecked and it's going to cause other problems as far as the body panels goes. And I can tell you from owning three Tacomas, those front lips are not strong. I was taking out my trash one time. I literally bumped into it and the whole front fascia fell off on my 2016. It broke all the clips and it just flopped to the ground. And that was me carrying a trash bag and just bumped into it. You know, like, come on. You think that that's not going to happen with that air dam getting caught on something and ripping that shit straight to the ground? Yeah, no, bad idea. And for whatever fuel savings you're getting out of making that thing, you know, this long, uh, trim it down and adjust your EPA stuff. Or how about this? Um, get an actual hybrid powertrain that reflects fuel economy instead of more power, right? No. Uh, overall, you know, I think that where they really did do a great job is the suspension. Now, I know that they're sticking with the uh, the leaf springs for the uh, the SR trims and maybe the SR5 as well. Um, but that uh, Multimatic uh, rear suspension and all of that stuff being adjustable, I think that that's great. Uh, another cool thing is, is, you know, disc brakes all around. Great job. <laughs> I'm excited for that. And I do love what they did with that tailgate, you know, with the power push button. And it's actually got like a knee sensor too, which I think is really great. And there, there's a few other changes. I'm going to get into the drivetrain a lot more, but I need to be able to research it and understand the engineering behind it before I can kind of speak to it. I can tell you from firsthand experience, buying first model year cars multiple times, there's going to be a lot of growing pains here, uh, particularly with this amount of change as far as, you know, drivetrain, powertrain, and suspension. And obviously, even being on a different chassis, this is on the same architecture that the Tundra and the Sequoia now share. And I imagine that it's going to be uh, what, you know, the Forerunner is going to be on as well. You know, that that's kind of my opinion on it. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Just from a looks standpoint, I honestly, I think that I prefer the looks of the GMC Canyon over this new Tacoma. And I definitely prefer both of them over the new Ford Ranger. I can really get into it because I don't give a shit about, you know, truck tents. And I'm kind of, I have, I have overland fatigue, let's just say, because I think it's, it's just a fad. It's going to die out. And a lot of that stuff that the trail hunter is doing right now, the Nissan Xterra did that in, you know, 2010 and continued to do it until everybody wanted more rounded and softer vehicles and everything. And nobody was really into the whole off-road thing. And that sort of died off. And then they killed the Xterra, which was an amazing, you know, off-road vehicle. Same thing with the FJ Cruiser um, and the traditional Pathfinder. And you will see this, this overland you know, fad probably go away as well. And that's why vehicles like the the Trail Hunter, I'm just not going to take that seriously. Not to mention it, it's, it's probably going to be $80,000 by the time the dealerships get their hands on it. So why the hell would you even, you know, care? I mean, unless you're tied into Toyota Corporate or something like that, or you got some friends, um, that Trail Hunter is going to be off limits for most people. Am I excited for the new Tacoma? Not really. I mean, it, it's a new truck. It's a new mid-sized truck. I would have been more excited if they, you know, took the SR5 and put a legitimate hybrid train into it that, <clears throat> yeah, wouldn't be as capable, but you're hitting freaking 38, 40 miles to the gallon. And I'm telling you, that would be all over the news. Like, look at the Ford Maverick. I mean, holy shit, the Ford Maverick, if they could actually produce it, the Ford Maverick would outsell the Tacoma. It, it would. People would buy that hybrid over the Tacoma because I've known it and I've seen it and I've done it. And, you know, and no mid-sized truck manufacturers will listen to me at all. And I can say, you can do this. You can get into the mid 30 mile per hour, a uh, mile per gallon territory with a mid-sized truck. You don't have to do the compact thing. You could probably even do it in a full-size truck, but they choose not to. And they think that it's not there, even though it's been shown, hey, it's there. The market's there, the people will buy it. So that was a huge miss in my opinion by the Ford Ranger, the GMC and the Chevy twins and this new Tacoma. So who does that leave? You know, I think that Nissan or Jeep could come in, you know, Ram could come in and, and sweep the whole market. If they can make an efficient midsize truck getting 35, 40 miles per gallon, they will absolutely decimate everyone. So rant over, uh, will I buy a Tacoma? Probably, you know, am I super excited about it? No, 